and welcome back to Nails Before Films. Today I'll be talking about movies again. I just got back from watching Kung Fu Panda 4, and I bought this freaking adorable Mr. Pink Topper. Isn't he just so cute? Anyway, I'm still writing the script for my Kung Fu Panda 4 review, so in the meantime, I decided to make a video about the previous movies first. I initially wanted to make one video about the first three movies, but my review for the first one turned out to be way too long, so I decided to split it into two. I'll be releasing another video soon to talk about Kung Fu Panda 2 and 3, and after that, I'll make another video on Kung Fu Panda 4. There's actually more to this nail than meets the eye. Stay till the end for the surprise. Or, if you don't want to hear me yap about Kung Fu Panda for more than 10 minutes, I've timestamped the surprise. You can just skip to that. But shame on you. Anyway, for those who are interested, here's my review of the first movie. I loved Kung Fu Panda as a kid and still adore it to this day. I watch it in the theater with my parents when I was like 10 or something. My dad always falls asleep when he watches movies in theaters. We watched Oppenheimer together last year in IMAX, and he slept almost through the entire thing in IMAX. Do you have any idea how hard it was to get those tickets? Anyway, the point is he actually stayed awake throughout the entirety of Kung Fu Panda and quite enjoyed it. He then bought me a bootleg DVD of the movie, and I watched it religiously for a month or so. I watched that movie every day and often more than once. I watched it so much that I even memorized the opening scene and could say it along with the movie without missing a beat. To this day, I can still recite scenes from the first movie with 100% accuracy. I haven't watched the first Kung Fu Panda in a while, so I rewatched it for this video and it definitely still holds up to this day. There are so many things to love about this movie, from the characters, the story, the themes, the animation, the humor, the music, everything is done right for this film. Po is so likable as the main character, and he's someone we can all relate to. He's frustrated with his life, he wants to be more, and despite the odds against him, he prevails because of hard work, resilience, and belief. His journey of becoming the Dragon Warrior is something we can all aspire to. We all want to be something more, we all want to improve and be the best we can be, but when opportunities present themselves, they may seem daunting and sometimes we give up, thinking we're not ready or we're afraid of the hardship. That's why we need to be more like Poe in the beginning. Stepping out of one's comfort zone will always be difficult, and people are going to say you can't do it, it's not for you, but if you're willing to go through the pain and put in the hard work, you just might succeed and change into a better person. What matters is whether or not you believe in yourself. If you do, eventually, other people may believe in you too. And if it doesn't work out for you at first, then maybe like Poe, you just need to find the method that's right for you, even if it's unconventional for others. As goofy as Poe can be, deep down he's such an inspiring character because he's willing to change and he's willing to try. And that's something we all need in our lives. Another thing that Kung Fu Panda did really well was that Poe wasn't the only one who grew throughout the film. The people around him did too, especially Shifu. He starts out as a bitter, jaded red panda who's tortured by his past and the fear of failing again in the future. He's consumed by guilt and becomes obsessed with fixing his mistake through control, which is one of the reasons why he couldn't accept Poe as the dragon warrior. But once he starts to believe and put aside his prejudice, he begins to see the potential in other people and eventually finds peace within himself and others. Although Po is the one who defeats Tai Long and brings Shifu peace, he wouldn't be able to do it if Shifu didn't believe him in the first place. I just love how they both grew throughout the story. The writing for Kung Fu Panda is honestly really tight, and they managed to develop so many characters throughout the span of merely an hour and a half. The same goes for The Furious Five, just not as dramatic. The Five initially hate Po as well, believing he's a joke, but after seeing how resilient he is, they eventually warm up to him. The transformation is done very organically, and Poe absolutely earned their respect by the end of the movie. 
Characters like Wu Gui and Po's dad are also done extremely well. While Wu Gui is a typical wise elder character, his wisdom is easy to understand, and he remains kind and approachable throughout the whole movie. Despite living for thousands of years, he never gives the impression that he's better than everyone else. He's extremely understanding. He never scolds Shifu for not believing, and he guides people with such patience and wisdom. Even though Kung Fu Panda is a kids' movie, I believe adults can also appreciate Wu Gui's wisdom. They probably even understand it more than the kids. Stuff like there are no accidents and his lesson to Shifu about the peach tree. These things probably hit closer to home for adults. All of the greatest kids' movie are the ones that can be enjoyed by children and adults, and Kung Fu Panda is definitely one of them. As for Paul's dad, Mr. Ping, I think he's the second wisest character in the Kung Fu Panda series. While he appears bossy at first and doesn't allow Paul to have any dreams other than noodles, deep down he loves Paul so much and only wants what's best for him realistically. When Paul came back thinking he failed as the Dragon Warrior, Ping didn't say, "I told you so. You should have just stuck with noodles. What were you thinking going into Kung Fu?" No, he sees that Po is upset and tries to comfort him while being realistic. Sometimes things just don't work out, and some things are not meant to be. It's true, but in the end, he's the one who enlightens Po and makes him realize the true meaning of the squirrel. And I think the relationship between Po and his dad is a great contrast to Shifu and Tai Long's relationship. Ping loves Po as a big fat panda. He's proud of him for who he is. It's okay that Po isn't special because what matters is that Ping believes he is. But as Shifu said himself, he was too proud of Tai Long, and his pride convinced him that Tai Long was meant to be the Dragon Warrior. This twisted pride transformed into obsession, and Tai Long started to believe that it wasn't enough to be himself. He had to be the Dragon Warrior, and he had to get the Dragon Scroll. Speaking of Tai Long, I love him so 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 much. Even though I'm not a furry, I had such a crush on him when I was a kid. He's just so threatening, and his backstory is so compelling. I love the drastic difference between him and Po, and I also love how you can see he has the potential for redemption, but he chooses to stay on the wrong path. You can see him soften a little when Shifu apologizes to him, but in the end, that's not enough for him because he can't get over his obsession with being the Dragon Warrior and proving his worthy. He's got all of the traits of a good villain: he's arrogant, he's smart, he's powerful, he's ruthless, he's chilling. Yet we can still somewhat sympathize with him. Oh, and don't forget charming. He's so gosh darn charming. His fight scenes are also incredible. I was absolutely blown away by his prison break sequence when I was a kid. It was just so smooth and fast-paced, like speed running a video game. And despite how swift it is, you can still follow through, and it's clear what's happening. His fight with the Furious Five was amazing too. The rope bridge sequence was choreographed so tightly, and they utilized that setting perfectly. His fight with Shifu was not only great visually, but I love how they added so much emotion to it. Their conversation was well written and fitted right into the fight. And adding Wu Gui's staff in there was smart too. While his fight with Po was more comedic, I like how they incorporated Po's dumpling fight with Shifu into the real fight. It's an easy but effective way to show how his training paid off. None of the other villains in the sequels ever came close to being as great as Tai Long. I just love him so much. Continuing with the animation, Kung Fu Panda was extremely well animated. It still holds up after 16 years. Somehow, the fight scenes from the first movie are much more memorable than the sequels. Besides the ones I mentioned, Paul's training montage and dumpling fight with Shifu were so great. I loved the chopstick fight; it was just so detailed. You can really tell they carefully choreographed the fights to make them both smooth and fast. I often find the fights in the sequels to be too much or too fast, and it's difficult to follow along. Besides the animation, the movie is just so well written. Many of the scenes serve more than one purpose. For example, despite the final fight being somewhat goofy, they actually build it up throughout the movie, and Paul didn't just suddenly defeat Tai Long. They hinted at Paul's nerves being different when Mantis was performing acupuncture on him. So that scene did four things: one, it was comedic; 
Two, it showed us the backstory of Shifu and Tai Long, and we learned more about their characters. Three, we also learned more about Tigress and why she was especially bitter towards Po. Lastly, it was building up the final fight. It was just so smart, and the main reason why Kung Fu Panda felt like it had two hours of content when the runtime was only an hour and a half. There are also so many iconic scenes and dialogues. Besides Ugui and Ping's wise lines, I still get chills from the scene. Do you want to learn kung fu? Then I am your master. The humor is also great in this movie. Most of the jokes can be enjoyed by kids and adults. Characters like Ugui are funny not in a haha way, but in a chuckling way. For example, when he told Shifu there was no good news and bad news, only news. But after learning Tai Long escaped, he was like, "That is bad news." And Po is funny in a more childish sense, but it never gets to the point that he's annoying. Scenes like him trying to get into the Jade Palace to see the tournament are funny, but we also feel bad for him somewhat. Most of the humor in the first movie is not just mindless, stupid toilet jokes for kids, and I really don't like how childish some of the sequels feel, which is quite a shame. Overall, Kung Fu Panda is great in all aspects and just so awesome. The characters are endearing. The story is cleverly written and well balanced. The themes are easy for kids to understand, but also deep enough for adults to appreciate. It is visually exciting. The voice acting is good. The music's great. There's just so much to love about this movie. It's quite possibly my favorite animated film of all time, or at least top three. Anyway, hope you guys liked my review and po nail. And here comes the surprise: the nail it glows. I wanted to make the background have some sort of golden aura, and while it's not exactly how I imagined it, I think it still looks pretty cool. Anyway, if any of you know a good product or method for glow in the dark nails, especially red and yellow glow in the dark, let me know in the comments. I'll finish the rest of the nails in my next video and review Kung Fu Panda two and three. After that, I'll finally get into four. Until then, as always, like, subscribe, comment, share, do what you want, keep nailing it, and skadoosh, people.